Sure, there's plenty of places to eat on your Royal Caribbean cruise that are included with your cruiser, but which ones do I like the best today? I'm ranking all the complimentary included restaurants on a Royal Caribbean cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Simply put, there is plenty of great food included in the cost of your Royal Caribbean cruise. One can easily go an entire cruise and enjoy nothing but food that has no additional cost from morning to night. After all, that's what the concept of a cruise has been for a really long time. But which ones are my favorite? Which ones are worth definitely visiting? And which ones, eh, you know, maybe you save it for another cruise later on. Today, I wanted to share my rankings of the complimentary restaurants, restaurants included with your cruise fare. In ranking the complimentary food on a Royal Caribbean cruise, there's a lot of choices that are out there. You know, I think we spent a lot of time talking about what costs extra and all the great specialty restaurants, but the food that's included with your Royal Caribbean cruise is pretty substantial. And going through the list of all the Royal Caribbean complimentary restaurants, I came up with 12 places that you can eat while on your cruise. And for these rankings, it was really tough for the first three or four i think the middle ones were a little easier and then i really had to struggle with what was going to be at the very bottom but i'm going to go one through 12 and i am sure this is going to upset some people number one complimentary top free restaurant on a royal Caribbean cruise the main dining room the main dining room is a stalwart institution that all cruise ship dining is based on quite frankly it's open for breakfast lunch and dinner lunch on sea days of course and I just got to think that it is overall, from start to finish, bottom to top, the most overall best restaurant that's included in your cruise fare for anyone that goes on a ship. And I think the controversy will start when I go to number two here. But what I love about the main dining room is that there is a good variety, especially for dinner and lunch when it is offered. The breakfast menu is pretty much the same every single day, so there's not much to talk about there. But it is great American-style breakfast where you get eggs and bacon and toast and you know, they, they have all the basics there. It's a little slower than obviously some of the other places, but when people go to the main dining room, they're looking for that sit down experience and really dinner is where it shines. And I've had great waiters. I've had not so great waiters in the main dining room, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's consistent. I found the food to be pretty good overall, you know, like all restaurants out there, whether we're talking about cruise ships or not, I found the food in the main dining room. Some things to be really great. Some things to be not so great. And some things to just be like, Hey, that was good. Let's move on to the next one. Right? So for those reasons, I'm giving the main dining room the top spot here for the complimentary options. Again, for the variety. Overall, I value variety more than maybe one or two other things that really stand out. That isn't to say the main dining room has the single best food option of all these complimentary restaurants. It's to say that overall, when you look at the total variety of food offered in the main dining room, that stands out to me because there's some really compelling choices. And I've always found something I really enjoy in the main dining room every single night of the cruise. So when you're talking about this list of the best and ranking the restaurants that are complimentary on a cruise ship, I'm going with main dining room number one. Number two, again, I'm sure there are people who disagree with me on this one, Coastal Kitchen. And people who disagree is I think some people would put Coastal Kitchen above the main dining room. Coastal Kitchen is the suites only restaurant that is complimentary for them. So you have to be staying in a suite in order to have access to Coastal Kitchen. And like the main dining room, it's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Think of Coastal Kitchen like your own main dining room for sweet guests, right? If for all sweet guests, including junior sweet guests, it's open for dinner. And then for grand suite and above, it's open for breakfast and lunch. The lunch menu, I think by most people's admission, is not great in Coastal Kitchen. The breakfast and dinner menu is good. And what a lot of people really enjoy about Coastal Kitchen, I think, is that level of service because it's a scaled down version of the main dining room, right? Different menu different wait staff. People really like the Coastal Kitchen wait staff. And the dinner menu, I think, really does stand out. So why did I put Coastal Kitchen below main dining? Well, number one, it's only available for suite guests. So there's a large subset of people that just can't dine there because they're not staying in a suite. Number two, I think their lunch menu is very lacking. It's been the most disappointing options I've had over there. Breakfast is breakfast. It's virtually the same in the main dining room or Coastal Kitchen. And then for dinner, you know, there's some really compelling choices and some not compelling choices depending on the day. Just like the main dining room, the Coastal Kitchen menu changes daily for dinner. And the, their steak is absolutely fantastic in Coastal Kitchen for dinner, but it's only offered on one day. Similar to the fact that there's lobster night in the main dining room only on one night. So I gave the edge to the main dining room as number one instead of Coastal Kitchen for number two for basically lack of access for most people. And I thought their lunch menu brought it down just a peg. Again, Save the comments for below. Let me know why I'm wrong down there. Moving on to number three, I am giving the edge here to number three, the Windjammer, the buffet. This is a classic thing. Again, variety, variety, variety. It's like 
real estate is all about location. Well, in the Windjammer, it's all about variety. Simply put, you're going to get the biggest selection of foods to choose from, especially for lunch and dinner. Just like the main dining room, because the location, the breakfast menu pretty much stays the same. But I love the fact there's a huge amount of food variety options. Now, with the Windjammer, it's very much peaks and valleys with a lot of the things that are there. And I'll be the first to admit I'll go in there. And the vast majority of things I just pass by. I look for specific items that appeal to me. But as a dad, I can appreciate that my kids can find something that's, that they can eat. I can find something I can eat. It's usually a crowd pleaser. And it's just been something that I've really enjoyed for many, many years. And when all comes down to it and we're not feeling like going out for a full meal, getting dressed up, the Windjammer usually is where we head. So I'm giving number three, the Windjammer, one of my favorite spots to go to. It's hard to go wrong with the Windjammer. All right, number four. So the top three, I feel pretty good about my rankings. Number four, Solarium Bistro. This is a vastly underrated venue available on some Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Most people have no idea this Solarium Bistro exists. Others have no idea that it's included with their cruise fare. And even more have no idea what they serve over here. But the Solarium Bistro, I got to tell you, is some place that I forget to go to all the time. But it is that darn good. I think their breakfast options are fantastic. Because people don't know that it exists, it's usually very easy to get into. If you want a breakfast omelet, Solarium Bistro is the way to go. There'll be no line over there. It's just super simple. When you go to the Solarium Bistro, it's a combination buffet and sit-down restaurant. Something is available via the buffet that's there, and you can also order some other items to be delivered to your table. What keeps Solarium Bistro from reaching maybe the top three is that the variety of food is not nearly as large as the dining room or the Windjammer, for that matter. And it is included, so it's hard to go wrong with that price. And because it's so uncrowded and offers essentially a sit-down experience, I think it's worthy of being in the number four spot. And if you're on a cruise ship that has Solarium Bistro, you've got to make a reminder to yourself to go check it out because all too often I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to Slayer and Bistro on my next cruise and I completely forget to go there, especially for breakfast. But whether it's dinner or breakfast, it is worth your try. So number four, Slayer and Bistro. Number five, El Loco Fresh. I got to tell you, I am a sucker for chips and salsa and there is plenty of chips and salsa at El Loco Fresh. El Loco Fresh has, well, Mexican food available, burritos, tacos, quesadillas, nachos. And what I love about it is the fixins bar. That's what truly takes El Loco Fresh above some of the other items we're going to talk about there because you can customize your meal. You can make the perfect burrito as you see it. You can top your tacos with everything that you like and nothing things you don't like. I love that level of customization. It's on the pool deck. It's convenient. It's great for the kids. It's great for me. It's a great afternoon snack. I wish more ships had El Loco Fresh on it. It is that good. And I'm a big fan of Mexican food, so I feel like that also kind of brings it up a little bit. So, Overall, I really think El Loco Fresh deserves this spot here at number five. And if you've been on Wonder of the Seas, they actually have a tequila bar that comes with it. So for the parents out there, you can enjoy somewhere else to get a margarita. I'm a big fan of El Loco Fresh, and I really think you got to try it out because it's one of the better new concepts Royal Caribbean has come up with, especially for the complimentary options. Number six, Cafe Promenade. I'm a little surprised this is down here at number six, but it's just a testament to the things that are, came in the first top five over here. Cafe Promenade, again, another stalwart you'll find on the promenade of any Voyager Freedom Oasis-class cruise ship. And you're not getting a meal at Cafe Promenade, but you are getting coffees. You're going to get a sandwich. And depending on the ship configuration, you may actually get pizza here, too. I did break out Sarantos Pizza for another item in our list. But depending on your ship, you may have the added bonus of pizza here. Because on some ships like Voyager-class ships, Cafe Promenade and Sorrentos are combined. But regardless of that fact, even without the pizza, I think Cafe Promenade is just a great choice. I really like it quite a bit. You know, it doesn't have a full meal, so you're not going to necessarily get full here, but when you get the munchies, especially late at night, Cafe Promenade is usually open very, very late. It's the go-to spot. Number seven, Park Cafe. I love the options here at Park Cafe. In fact, when it's a shore excursion day and we need something to eat before we get off the ship, we usually go to Park Cafe for a quick grab and go. Park Cafe is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner you want to call it that their hours are weird which is probably why it's a little lower on this list and doesn't rank as high as cafe promenade but i love the selections here their breakfast menu is great again grab and go perfect for just you know i think most appetites that are out there not necessarily the pickiest eaters in the world but at the same time you've got just enough that's there and their lunch selections and slash dinner we'll get into that in a second is really compelling they have the Kemmelwick sandwich here which i absolutely love if you have a Park Cafe on some of the older ships, like a Radiance-class ship, Park Cafe is kind of a pseudo version of the Cafe Promenade because they'll also offer pizza and things like that. But when I think of Park Cafe, I think of Park Cafe on the Oasis-class cruise ship. So we're going to use that as the basis for this 
ranking here. Uh, I really like the fact that there is that Kemmelwick sandwich, the custom salads, the bagel bar in the morning. It's wonderful. The thing that really brings Park Cafe back, even below Cafe Promenade, because Park Cafe has meals in here, whereas Cafe Promenade does not, is Park Cafe's hours are super weird. So for breakfast, totally fine. But lunch, not bad at all. But then that dinner time, they close before the Windjammer opens. It's kind of like that early bird special kind of idea. I, I don't know why it's not open later on. I would much rather have that open later in the evening, but it's not usually. So as a result, Park Cafe gets knocked down to number seven on my ranking simply because the hours aren't there, whereas Cafe Promenade is open almost 24 hours. That gives it a little bit of an edge. Number eight, Sorrento's Pizza. You know, if we had done this ranking about three, four, five years ago, this would be much lower on the list, but Roller Caribbean has really improved the Sorrento's Pizza selection. So Sorrento's Pizza is the complimentary pizza you can get on board every single Royal Caribbean cruise ship. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes the pizza comes in other places like either Park Cafe or Cafe Promenade, depending on the ship you're on. But for the purposes of this list, I'm talking about the ships that have a separate Sorrento's Pizza location, like the Freedom, Oasis, and Quantum Class ships. Sorrento's Pizza offers, well, pizza, and that's all it's got. It does have sometimes some like weird snacks, like not weird, but like it's weird because I've never ever seen anybody order it. But they have some cold dishes and some salamis and eggplant. I'm guessing somebody orders them, but I never even think about doing that. Anyway, the point is, this is about pizza, pizza, and more pizza. And over the last couple of years, Royal Caribbean purposefully redid the pizza at Sorrento's Pizza to improve the taste of it. And it is really good. That crust is absolutely fantastic. Why is it at number eight, a little lower on the list? In fact, it's approaching the bottom third of the list. Well, it's only pizza. So it's either great or bad. It's like, it's pizza or it's pizza. So depending on your perspective, it's pizza. And that kind of limiting factor brings Sorrento's Pizza down to number eight. Number nine, if you happen to be on a quantum class ship, well, you'll have Cafe at 270. Now, admittedly, Cafe 270 is the quantum class version of Park Cafe, but because it's a different name and slightly different implementation, I'm giving it its own list, but I am bringing this down here to number nine on the list. Cafe 270 is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just like Park Cafe. It has limited hours and weird hours where it's not open in the evening times, but I do like its location back by 270, but at the same time, while it's got a wonderful view out there, it's a pain to get to, whereas there actually is a Cafe Promenade on quantum class ships right in the middle of the ship, which is far more convenient. But what really makes Cafe 270 stand out are some of the grab-and-go options. It has the Kemmelwick sandwich, it has soups, it has a salad bar, and it has the custom bagel stuff. So it's really a version of really Park Cafe for the Quantum class. But it's far away location and limited hours, just like Park Cafe. Bring it down here, and I'll be honest with you guys, I still would prefer Sorrento's Pizza, which is available on the Quantum class ships, over Cafe 270 in a lot of cases. So I'm bringing it over here. Number 10, we're now in the last three of our list is Cafe Latitudes. The Cafe Latitudes is the version of Cafe Promenade found on older ships like the Radiance class or even the Vision class. The reason why I have this so far down on the list, even though it's very similar to Cafe Promenade, is because I feel like the food selection here is not as good as Cafe Promenade. I don't have any empirical data to back this up, but every time I'm on a Brilliance of the Seas or a Serenade of the Seas and I look at the food selection, the little snacks they have there, it always looks way worse, less compelling than the Cafe Promenade selections. I feel like their food selection is just a slip down, and that's why it came all the way down to number 10. Number 11 is a complimentary restaurant available only on a couple of ships left. I think Harmony has it and maybe a couple others. Anyway, Mini Bites. Mini Bites is a complimentary pool deck option that is kind of a blend between El Loco Fresh before there was an El Loco Fresh and a Cafe Promenade or Sorrento's. They'll offer burgers, fries, hot dogs, quesadillas, omelets in the morning, salads, and more. And, you know, it offers a decent selection of food, especially for their lunch hours, but nothing really stands out. A local fresh, I feel like, has so much a more compelling option because of the customization and the fact that, well, I'm going to value Mexican food over just burgers, fries, and hot dogs, which is just, you know, ho-hum kind of stuff. So, Mini Bites came down to number 11. There's not many ships that have it anymore, so it's kind of like, you know, on its way out, obviously, but we've got that number 11. And then number 12, I've got the Doghouse, which is a hot dog and sausage stand uh, that offers a variety of meats and toppings. It's a hot dog cart, right? There's only hot dogs there. You can customize it, which is great, and I give it points for that. At the end of the day, you either want a hot dog or you don't want a hot dog. I feel like most of the times I don't want a hot dog, and I feel like it's never really, really that busy at all. So I'm putting the Doghouse at number 12. So there you have my list of the top 12 Royal Caribbean complimentary restaurants. I'm going to have in another video, I'm going to rank the specialty restaurants. See how those go. I think that'll be 
a little more heated battle because there's a lot of compelling choices over there. Let me know in the comments what you think of my rankings because inevitably we're talking about a subjective topic over here. And when it comes to food, there's always a lot of different opinions on which is best. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me, disagree with me, or somewhere in between. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.